Diane here. Okay, I'm back in the kitchen. Today, we're going to make a couple pans of brownies. Now, I'm going to show you how to make a really large pan of brownies. It'll make 24 brownies, but they're good to have in the freezer. Or you can cut this recipe in half and make a 9 by 13. Anyway, they're really good. I have had these in my repertoire for so long, it's ridiculous, and everybody loves them. So anyway, um, we're going to start by cracking the eggs. I know it sounds stupid, but what you want to do to crack an egg is crack it on the counter and then put it in the bowl. If by doing this you're cracking it on the bowl and you happen to lose some shell, it really costs a whole lot of time to go fishing it out. And then do you really get the shell out? That has yet to be determined. So it's just easier to crack it on the counter and then you stick your thumbs in the two eggshells and it cracks really easy. Anyway, so that's just a fast little tip on how to. And what we're gonna do is crack 10 eggs into this bowl. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm making another pan after this. And my shells are gonna end up in the compost pile. And then we're gonna add some sugar. It takes quite a bit of sugar because the, sugar, the chocolate that I use for this is unsweetened chocolate. And since it's unsweetened chocolate, then we want to add enough sugar to compensate for that. So here I have 10 eggs. Now, the scale, I've mentioned this before, but it's really my best friend and it makes things so much easier. Because this takes so much sugar, what we're going to do is put the bowl on the scale and then turn it on. So now I have zero in the scale. And this calls for seven and a half cups of sugar, but I don't feel like measuring seven and a half cups, so I know that a cup measures seven ounces, so it's really gonna be 53 ounces is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna take this and dump 53 ounces in here, and I'm gonna switch my scale over to measure 53 instead of by the pound. Then this is going to get some vanilla extract, some almond extract, and we are going to mix it up. Um, it's about a tablespoon per batch. What I need is a couple tablespoons. I already know where the measurement is in the lid, but if, you know, get a measuring spoon out, or a tablespoon is a half ounce of liquid measure, so you can measure it that way as well. And then as far as almond extract, it's a half a teaspoon, so it's just a little tiny dash. Don't use too much almond extract, because if you use too much, it's overpowering, and it really it doesn't work with the brownie. Then what you're going to do is put on, hopefully you have a stand mixer. If not, you can do it by hand, but you need to mix this well until the ribbon falls. In other words, when you lift up the beater, it will the uh, batter will fall right off the beater bar, so or the whisk part. So anyway, we're going to let this go for a while. It takes about five to six minutes, and we'll see what it looks like. So in the meantime, while that's mis mixing, I want to show you how to prepare the pan. This is really a fast recipe, and there's really no reason you should be buying uh, brownies in the store because these, I guarantee, are so good you won't believe it. So the easiest way, this is the size pan I'm going to use. It's a 12 by 17. But if, like I say, if you cut this recipe in half, um, it works wonderful in a 9 by 13. All right, so you want to foil the pan. The easiest way to foil the pan is to put the pan upside down in front of you. Use heavy duty foil so you're not going to be eating it. Pull it off large enough so it'll come off the side, rip it, and then what you're going to do is mold the foil on the pan and fold the corners over. Make a nice neat job because the last thing you want to do is eat foil. It really hurts the teeth. It's bad. So fold the corners over, press them down well and I should have a nice even edge. Take the foil off, flip the pan over, 
and then this presses nicely in the pan so you have a nice clean edges, nice straight cuts or nice um, straight sides in the pan. Push the corners down so that you end up with a nice square cut on the brownie when they're done. And there. The only other thing that you have to do now is my insurance to make sure that the foil peels off the brownie when they're done is to take some kind of fat in a can and spray, especially in the corners. Don't spray over the floor. You always want to spray either in the sink or on the counter, something like that. If you spray on the floor, you stand the chance of slipping if when it undoubtedly hits the floor. So anyway, now our pan's ready. I'm gonna put that aside. And while that's going, the next thing we're going to do, there's only three and a third cups um, to this double batch of brownies. So I'm just going to measure that by hand. I'm going to have this ready to go. And that is one and a third. So I only have two more cups left. But I want to show you the chocolate. Okay, what I've already done is because I take this chocolate off a 11 pound block of chocolate, I already cut that in small pieces and melted it with the butter. It's a pound of unsweetened chocolate and a pound of butter. Not margarine, not anything weird. Use butter. Uh, mix, you know, if you use salted butter, then you'll cut down your salt going into the um, mix. If you use salted or unsalted butter, add a touch more. Anyway, what you want to do is make sure that the chocolate is melted really well and that the butter is thoroughly stirred into it. It takes about, well, for this double batch, two and a half minutes to start it melting. Then I take it and stir it up a little bit, and then I put it in for another two minutes, and then when you stir the chocolate and the butter together, stir from the center and work outwards, and then you'll want to go around the edge every now and then, but it should look like that when it's fully incorporated. So that is our chocolate and butter mix. Now, this is looking well. Now another thing that I did was I put the eggs in the bowl first and then put the sugar in so that you don't, there's less, um, you're fully incorporating the sugar into the eggs. Otherwise you'd probably have to scrape that down, but you can see in the bowl that it forms a ribbon when you lift up the eggs and sugar it just leaves a ribbon in the bottom so that is really kind of ready that didn't take too long love the stand mixer and so up it goes another trick if you forget and put the sugar in first another little trick but you have to be careful put the mixer on slow drop the bowl down and then pull it back up and that gives it a mix or take the rubber spatula and go all the way, drop it and drop, go all the way down the side. But anyway, then what I do is use my splash guard or pouring shield, put that on. So after the eggs and the sugar are in there, and I've already put the vanilla and almond in, now I'm going to pour in the chocolate which melted beautifully. And then, make sure that gets mixed really well. I scrape, I always use rubber spatulas, not real stiff ones because you want to be able to go around the side of the bowl. Chocolate and butter are kind of pricey, so make sure that you're getting it all off the bowl and into the batter. I'm going to turn this up a little bit, and this looks like this is getting mixed beautifully. I'm taking it off my little pouring guard, splash guard. Okay, then the next thing to go in is going to be the flour. I'll turn this around this way because I'm right-handed so it's easier. And there's my third of a cup. There's one cup. I need two more. 
and I level it off in the bag just because it's fast and easy. There's one. So that's a total of three and a third cups of the flour. You can see the bowl gets a little full, but that's all right. Then I'm going to add some walnuts, and it's a pound of walnuts or a half pound to the half batch. And what I like to do, again, with my handy scale, is I'm going to turn the scale on, and because I buy larger bags of walnuts, which is a lot more economical for sure, put, after it's turned on, put the bag of walnuts on the scale, and then you will know how to take out a pound. There's 16 ounces, obviously, to the pound. This weighs one pound, 11 ounces, so I'm going to pull out the walnuts until there's 11 ounces left on that scale. All right, so what happened was the 11 ounces, or the pound of, of walnuts went in there. I mixed it up really well. Then I dumped the batter into the pan and spread it really evenly into the corners, as you can see, and off the side. This will... Um, this will settle nice and even as it bakes. So anyway, this is going to go into a 350 oven for about 35 minutes or until the sides shrink away or until the batter shrinks away from the sides ever so slightly. And so I will, and these by the way cannot be cut until the, they need to be refrigerated overnight. So they need to be cut the next day. So it's good to think about these for the next day. However, like I say, they do freeze well, so it's good to make a batch of them and put them in the freezer so you always have them. Anyway, I'm gonna put these in the oven and I'll show you what they look like when they come out. And I hope you try this recipe because it's guaranteed really good. Well, the brownies have baked for about they took about 35 minutes in a 350 degree oven and the way I could tell that they were done is they shrunk just ever so slightly from the edges of the pan. And another good visual on what a good brownie will look like is the little bit of a crack on the top. So these uh, came out of the oven yesterday. I chilled them overnight. And here is the reason for the heavy duty foil. What you could do when they're done and thoroughly chilled is you simply pull them out of the pan, but regular foil, the regular weight, doesn't really do that all that well. And then it's easy to peel the foil down the sides and off the bottom and you won't come up with any little specks of foil left on the brownies themselves. Then you want to mark them off evenly because this is such a big pan I have a little dough cutter that I use that I absolutely adore and I spread it and I mark where they should be, where the cut should be on both sides. This side has to be adjusted a little bit. So I'm going to mark that, make sure it's even. Nope, not quite. That might be about right. I lightly score them. And what I find is a really handy tool is for large pans is this double handle cheese knife and then you just simply cut across anyway so I'm going to cut these and then they're going to be dipped in some tempered chocolate that is another subject altogether I have some chocolate that I melted the way basically you temper chocolate is you take chocolate in small pieces and melt it to about 120 degrees, then you drop it down to 81 degrees, then you bring it back up to 91 degrees. And then it will temper and have a nice snap. And without a thermometer, I like these little infrared thermometers to test the top of it, and it's got a little 
raised so you know where you're going but this is pretty accurate plus it's fast then when uh, when it's done I put it over a pan of warm water but I also put a towel on it because I don't want any steam condensating in this chocolate at all it'll make the chocolate seize up and it won't work if you get the chocolate too hot and you don't drop the temperature down it's gonna streak and it'll really look nasty so anyway that'll be um, that'll be something you can look up on the internet and find really explicit instructions on that but that's basically how you do it so I am going to cut these and just as a quick review of the uh, recipe to make half of this amount or half a pan of brownie brownies you use five eggs mixed with three and three quarter cups of sugar with a tablespoon of vanilla half a teaspoon of almond extract mix that up in the in a stand in any kind of mixer stand mixer or hand mixer until the ribbon falls stand mixer is easier and then you add three and a third cups of or I'm sorry you add one and two thirds cup of flour and then you add a half a pound of walnuts and stir it together don't over mix it um, do them in that order too: flour then the nuts so that the flour if you put the nuts in first then the nuts get coated by the flour then you have little white pieces in the nuts when the uh, when they bake in the brownies then it looks bad so do them in that order do the flour mix that well then the, the nuts and then bake them in a 350 for about a half hour to 35 minutes that's it for our brownie lesson and I will show a picture of these what they look like I'm, I'm baking these around holiday time and I'm also going to dip some truffles and coat those with bittersweet chocolate and then white chocolate Well, the brownies got cut. These are brownies that got cut in half. And then I already had some truffles made, so I dipped those. But what I wanted to do, because it's the holidays, I uh, tempered some chocolate and then kind of made them look like little Christmas trees. And also with the extra chocolate that I already had tempered, because tempering takes a while, I took some deli lids you know like one pound deli container lids and poured chocolate in the bottom of the lids and then put some chopped dried apricot and some pistachios and a little almond and a little coconut over the top of them then drizzled them with white chocolate and you can see from the bottom that these are going to get pa packed in little clear plastic bags and they'll look really pretty after they get tied up anyway because of the plastic that I molded it in the bottom comes out nice and shiny and pretty easier than using acetate which is sometimes hard to find you can find it in craft stores but plastic lids work really good any kind of plastic you can mold in any kind of plastic whatsoever and it works out really well for a nice shiny back appearance and then there's the front so there you have chocolate brownies a couple of different ways dipped not dipped and then truffles that'll be another um, uh, segment however if you want to know more about tempering chocolate best to go to Calibo website because they have various ways that there's a couple of different ways you can temper chocolate and that's the best place to find out full instructions on how to because it is a little tricky one degree off and then you end up with streaked chocolate because it's out of temper so anyway I hope you enjoyed this and do try them they're good brownies uh, best to keep them in the freezer and slice them off a little bit at a time but do enjoy them and hope to see you on the next time oh.